Hello and welcome to Window on the World, a show where we share the experiences of Missouri Southern students and faculty who take advantage of the many study abroad opportunities here at MSSU. Today I'm with some students and a professor from the Spanish department who spent some time in Spain this summer. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Doing Pretty good, good. thanks. Yeah. How are you? Good, thank you. So. To start off, I want to have you guys introduce yourselves for the audience and then tell them your major and, or what you do here at Missouri Southern. All right, well, my name is Lexa Curtis, and my major is Spanish, and I have two minors, and it's Cultural Anthropology and International Studies. My name is Ruben, Ruben Galve, and uh, I'm a Spanish professor here at Missouri Southern. My name is Clarissa Garno, and I'm a nursing major with a Spanish minor. All right. So to start off, I want you guys to kind of tell me what the purpose of your trip to Spain was. Um, well, my purpose was to get to learn Spanish more and take advantage of the opportunity to go to Spain and learn about a new country and get to see new things and experience new things. That would be a great time to go. I'm still young. <laughs> Um, my purpose was I was um, working to finish my minor off before starting the nursing program and I figured a hands-on experience such as going to a country that spoke Spanish, the language I was uh, minoring in, would be a great way to complete that minor rather than taking another course here. So had any of you ever been abroad before? Um, I've been to Mexico once for a week. It was our senior trip from high school. But it wasn't that much of a culture shock there because we were in a really touristy spot and everybody spoke English and so it wasn't too much different but it was still really pretty. Going to Spain was a lot different. I've done a few um, trips with my family, just like Caribbean islands, things like that, but never anything as big as like a study abroad experience. Kind of like Lexa said, spoke English, no culture shock really, kind of just like you're almost still in America, kind of more resort-like areas and stuff. So. So is this a little bit like going back home for you? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, what uh, what made you guys decide to go on this trip as opposed to another trip, say, to South America or another Spanish-speaking country? Well, for me, I want to do as many trips as I can. <laughs> and I saw the opportunity to go to Spain right now, and hopefully one day I'll get to go to South America too. But, and I thought since I'd be going with people I knew, it would be a perfect time, get to be with friends and enjoy it. Um, for me, I'd had uh, Ruben as a professor before, so I had experience of having him as a teacher, and I knew a little bit about Spain from his teaching and everything. And then also, just like I said, before entering the nursing program, kind of just jump on that um, when I still had time to study abroad before I missed the opportunity to. So you mentioned culture shock. Did you experience a lot when you first got to Spain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had taken a different flight, and my flight got canceled. So when I got there, it was really different because everybody was speaking to me in Spanish, and I was kind of there on my own for a little bit. But So it was definitely a shock, but <laughs> it was good. I enjoyed it. It really challenged me to get out there and figure it out and uh, I feel more comfortable traveling now so I guess it was good. <laughs> um, I was with the group and uh, when we got off but we knew as soon as we got off the plane we were like we're gonna be speaking Spanish from this point on and um, so that's how we felt. We met Ruben at the airport and then we really noticed that we were really spoiled when we got to like the subway and we had to walk up tons of flights of stairs with like suitcases that were 50 plus pounds and like, we're just really spoiled as Americans, so as soon as you got to Spain, you realized, wow, okay, like, this is a lot different, and it's really like an unfamiliar territory rather than being in the United States where everything's like right there at your hand when you want it, you know, you kind of have to work for some things rather than just um, take an elevator, take an escalator. This time you had to walk up thousands of stairs <laughs> with heavy suitcases. <laughs> so what was the biggest thing that was different from America besides speaking Spanish? Um. I'd say probably the public transportation, but it's probably because we live in a small town here, but that mm -hmm. was the biggest difference for me is being able to use the bus. There was places you could rent bikes just on the street. 
and uh, that, that was my first time taking like a taxi <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, it was cool though I enjoyed it I would agree with Lexa in that regard. Um, they do a really good job about public transportation there. And like Alexa said, we live in a small town, but even like going to New York City or Washington DC here, you still don't see the amount of like, example is a high speed train. Those don't exist anywhere in the United States that I know of. And we w all wish they did, but that was a great like advantage that they have. And then also like air conditioning, a lot different, like not a lot of air conditioning everywhere, central AC kind of unheard of just different things that you realize are luxuries in the United States, but and then you go somewhere else and you're like, wow, this is still a European country, but it doesn't have central AC or things like that. So where did you guys stay while you were in Spain? Because I know you were there for quite a while. Yeah. We mainly stayed in Seville, and we traveled mm -hmm. to different cities on little trips and stuff, but the majority of the time we were in Seville for the whole month. And we would stay with a host family, so we were each assigned a host family with either like one or two other people that lived with us. And some of the families just had a host mom, other ones might have had the dad, um, maybe some kids at home. My personal experience was just a host mom, and I lived with two other girls, and we really enjoyed it, like having that experience because she cooked for us, and she just loved us the way a mom would, and we still call her our Spanish mama and things like that. Like it's really fun to um, remember her, and she likes all of our stuff on Facebook now, so it was a really neat experience to be able to live there rather than like a hotel where you wouldn't get as much culture um, surrounding you. So you mentioned cooking. Was there any food that you ate that really stood out to you as being different? Uh, I really like, everywhere I got went, I usually had the pork steak there. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good and something different I noticed about they put salt crystals on it and it was really good and they had um, boiled potatoes and they had a dish with potatoes and eggs and peppers and you just mix it all up mm -hmm. and it, I love that. <laughs> There's things like a paella which I really liked and it had like um, mussels and shrimp and rice and saffron in it and you can pretty much throw whatever you want in it and like other dishes like a lot of fresh vegetable things, fresh fruit. Um, fruit was like common even as a dessert, which is kind of different from what we think here. We think, oh, it's a healthy food group, but it was kind of more since it's sweeter, like a dessert there um, and such. You mentioned your day trips. Uh, where, what was your favorite place that you visited while you were in Spain? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that question's hard. <laughs> I don't think we can answer that, honestly. Yeah. Like, I get that asked a lot. <laughs> I usually, oh, man. I really enjoyed Cadiz. It, it was really pretty, the beaches there, and we took a, a tour bus just for one day, and we traveled around the city, and I, I liked Granada, too. The mountains were beautiful, mm -hmm. and it, it was really, it was kind of relaxing there, too, just being in the middle of it. It was nice. I mean, even though it was in Spain, what about you guys in Lagos? Mm -hmm. I wasn't there, but uh, I heard. Uh, yeah. We went to Lagos, Portugal also one weekend, so that was a really neat opportunity to be able to just literally take a bus over to Portugal. Like, how many times can you say you went to Portugal for a weekend? So that was a really neat experience too. And I'm kind of with Lexa, like every single place we went had its own unique features that made us like fall in love with that portion of Spain or that portion of Portugal. And I think that was like the biggest like part of it was neat to see like different regions or different um, cities in Spain. So we have a few pictures that you guys gave us to show, and I'd like to show them now and have you guys kind of explain what was going on in all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was in a, in a theater, and they, in that picture, we were taking a bunch of pictures. <laughs> that was in um, Merida, that was the name of the city. It was a Roman amphitheater, uh, actually Roman theater. Um, which is conserving great, great shape. Yeah, it was really neat to s be there and see that because it wasn't like anything you'd really see like in America, at least not anything I've seen before, because it was just like Ruben said, like Roman ruins and you don't see that here. And so it was really neat to kind of stand at the bottom where that picture was taken and kind of just look up at all of it because it's a huge theater and it was really neat to see it still standing and parts of it that had been distressed over time and other parts that were still intact, like very um, strong architecture and everything.
And right next to it was um, where the gladiators used to fight as well, too. So mm -hmm. it was cool to see both of them in one day. <laughs> and uh, this is the Plaza de España. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really pretty. They had uh, ceramic tiles of the cities, and you could go, like we saw Cadiz, and then there was one for Seville, too. And they were beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was one of the places when I figured out I was going to travel to Spain that I really actually wanted to see. And we went back several times, like me and my uh, girls that lived with me and everything. And so it was really neat because there was like a half circle where you could like take boats around. And um, it was really pretty at night, lit up. There was, it was definitely like um, marvelous architecture that you wouldn't see here. Uh, and just uh, to add real quick, uh, that's a big group. That was uh, uh, all, of, all of us and also a group from uh, Virginia Military Institute. Uh, we just all met up uh, in Plaza de España, or we, we met up before and we, we were all the way there. There's just uh, a colleague of mine, a friend of mine who teaches there, and uh, she was uh, taking a study abroad program to Madrid, and they came to visit. So we all got together and uh, got to see that. And just random fact, uh, for, those of, uh, th for the people who like uh, Star Wars, Plaza de España mm -hmm. is in uh, the second episode, I believe, of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, we've got more pictures. Mm. Uh, this was the uh, <laughs> Rio Frio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's correct. <laughs> and we all got to go and walk in the water for a little bit. <laughs> I personally made jokes about how it was called a river, but it's not nearly as big as like a river you would see in Missouri or even anywhere through the state, so it's kind of like a creek, but we had a good time. <laughs> we ate dinner there, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is <laughs> his family took us to... Uh, Arisena. Yeah, Arisena. And they, we went to a cave there. They took us out to eat. It was a great day. It was a special little trip. And we went to a little bakery shop, too. Mm -hmm. His family kind of spoiled us by going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we took, uh, that's also at Athena. We took mm -hmm. uh, four different cars, just some family <laughs> members. just kind of helped with it. And um, uh, they came up with the idea of going to this place and see the coves. And um, that's just walking around the, the town, all of us. And that's also there in Aracena, and that part of the, I don't know if you guys remember, you can explain actually what you're trying to do there. Yeah, they used to, so they used to wash clothes on those like washboards, kind of like what you would see, like the glass ones or everything you'd see. And so that was him, our, um, his family and us all pretending to wash clothes or um, <laughs> his wife's case washing the baby. So it was kind of <laughs> fun to just joke around a little bit. <laughs> Oh, that's me and Alex. <laughs> 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 we are in uh, Alcazar. That's right, Alcazar. Okay, uh -huh. I never say it right. <laughs> 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 and uh, that shot was really pretty because of all the mm -hmm. the greenery that was coming down, and we were taking a little tour on our own. <laughs> so before we go, uh, do you guys have any uh, suggestions for other students who would want to study abroad? Do it. Do yeah. it now. Do it tomorrow. <laughs> do it every day of your life. Yeah, I would do it, <laughs> uh, just to get the chance to mm -hmm. go with people you know and people that have prepared you to take on this trip and they, they know what they're doing and y you just get to go and enjoy it. It's definitely d different as a student than it would be as just like a traveler because you get such a different experience mm -hmm. and people don't realize that like until they actually go for it and do it. Take a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to thank all of you for being <laughs> on today, and we are going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with a couple more students who went on the trip. Hey, give me that back! Make me! Want it back? I could have done the same to you, but I chose wiser. Thanks, Rory. Bullying shows weakness, not strength. Remember to tell, yell, run, or defend yourself if you have to. Nobody should get bullied. That's right, Rachel. That's right. Hello everyone, we're back with Window on the World. I'm your host, Mackenzie Payton, 
And I have a couple more students with me who uh, went to the Spain trip. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Yeah. So for the two of you who are new, I'd like you to introduce yourselves and tell me what your major is. Okay. Well, I'm Ashlyn Schroyer. I'm a nursing major here at Southern. I graduate in May, and I have a Spanish minor. I'm Alex Salgado. I'm a senior here studying computational mathematics. So had either of you ever been abroad before you'd gone on this trip? I went to the Dominican Republic whenever I was a senior in high school, but nothing like this. Um, I hadn't gone anywhere except to the West Coast, to California a couple times, so no. Yeah. So to start off, I want to get back into the pictures and kind of finish those up, and then I'll ask you some more follow-up questions about them. <laughs> there they are. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> At Real Alcatraz. And that's like right outside where you can see, I think, the gardens. So, I don't know, it's a nice area. Mm -hmm. Ruben took that picture of me. Yeah. He's a good photographer. That's, uh, by the way, continuing with the whole Hollywood thing, uh, the Real Cather, that, uh they record Game of Thrones there. Oh. Um, I mean, you know, parts and pieces. Um, that was La Giralda in Sevilla. Uh, there's actually a mini version of that in Kansas City. It's kind of one of the bigger landmarks that Sevilla is known for. One day we took a trip there and climbed to the top. Yeah, it was weird though, because it's just ramps all the way up. There's no stairs. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, awkward. Um, oh, is that, where is that? That was La Rabida oh. and then and the Col thinking, Columbus yes. trip. That yeah. was a monastery that um, Columbus asked for money at and recruited people to go to America. So that was, yeah, that was, so that was uh, the group. We were there with uh, also a Texas Tech University student. Uh, it's a big group and that was right before we got to the monastery. Was that that well? Was that that? The it was well. the well. Oh. <laughs> the well. Uh, is that at Alcazar also? That's Lexa. Yeah, that's in the. That's actually inside the monastery, oh. the Columbus oh, monastery, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's uh, Alexa and and mm -hmm. Hill. And Hill is actually that. Alex's uh, Alex's brother. Baby yeah. brother. A little. Um, that's also at La Ravida. That's where they will, will eat. It's a very sacred place. Same room. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's just like basically mm -hmm. e explaining what that room. Uh, was, was about what they did over there, um, you know, when Columbus was there. Um, and that's uh, Dr. Brusterian, he's a Texas Tech professor. He was just kind of giving us a tour of the place. Oh, that's gonna be back to the Roman ruins again in, uh, that was in Merida, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where we, we could see like where the gladiators fought and then also the Roman theater and a couple other areas. That's at the theater there. Um, so that's kind of like a big panorama almost of, you can see the whole thing. So where we were earlier, that was us standing in front of those columns and then back behind you can kind of see the, the amplitude of all of those, those seatings is huge. Mm -hmm. Same place. Catching some shade, that was yeah. pretty much what I did yeah. in Spain, going to, from shade to shade to shade. That was a hot day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there were many hot days. And so, yeah, they just uh, took advantage of a little shade, just sat down, hang out, <laughs> and uh, yeah, get a break. Yeah. So, what was your favorite place to visit while you were in Spain? Um, mine was probably Arsena to see um, like the small town feel of Spain, kind of, kind of like in the states, you have big cities and small cities. But Arsena was really cool to see the caves, and that was really special. And then obviously Seville because that was our home for a month. I enjoyed Ar Arsena a lot too, but I think my favorite would be um, up in Granada. We went to um, La Alhambra, La Alha Alhambra, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was like the last uh, fighting space in, or like defensive space in Spain. Um, and there's like a lot of uh, ancient stuff there too, a lot of tile work. We made tiles one day in class and I don't know, I just really liked it. There's just like all these different evolutions of tiles that you can see throughout that whole building because it just, they never really completed it. So there's just like tile work that just evolved over time. And all this tile work comes from the Moorish when, you know, Spain was under, or being ruled by, by the Muslims, by the Moors uh, for so many centuries. Um, so all this tile work uh, comes from, from that time. 
So you can see the mix that we saw, you know, a little bit of Roman, a little bit of Moorish, Muslim, Christian too, you know, Renaissance and all that. So moving on from kind of the touring, what did you guys, did you guys have classes that you took while you were there? Oh yeah, we had class one or two times a week um, with Ruben at the Texas Tech University Center, and that was in the mornings. And then we would kind of have assignments. Sometimes we had alternate assignments to where he would send us out into the city to kind of experience things. But we did fundam fundamentals such as grammar and everything too. One of our first class periods, Ruben sent us on a scavenger hunt throughout the city. <laughs> and uh, all of the locations we had to find were just like these random, they weren't even exact locations. It'd be like, go find the giant mushrooms. And you had to figure out by asking random people that lived in the city where the giant mushrooms were. Some of them just looked at you like you were crazy, and then some of them <laughs> knew exactly what you were talking about. But that was probably the best experience I had uh, going into it and learning like culture and having to dive in and ask people for help. It really helped us get oriented to the city as well because we would be walking and going wherever. We also yeah. found out that you could use your Maps app, like Google Maps, to navigate because we never thought that we would have to use Maps ever. And we're looking at this map like, <laughs> I think it's over there, but I don't know which way I'm facing. So, so were there any uh, other assignments that you made to share your experiences with other people while you were there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all made movies. We were all in little groups, and those are actually on Dr. Galvez's website, the what is it, Galvez.weebly.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. com. Yeah, and so those are all mm -hmm. on there, but we kind of all chose to make our own different little skits, and they all had plots and. Definitely amateur, but we made them. <laughs> yeah, definitely the, the movies and then also the tile work that we were able to do. Um, and then a lot of just uh, photos as we toured around, whether it was the cathedral or, well, the cathedral, cathedrals. We went to multiple cathedrals. We were kind of burnt out towards the end. We took a small trip to Madrid, and Ruben's like offering ideas. He's like, well, we could see this cathedral, and everyone's like, no, no, no cathedrals. <laughs> no <more. We're> <laughs> they were pretty, but I can only see so many. Did you learn anything outside of class that you feel like you brought back with you? Mm, I really liked the Spanish culture of kind of taking a siesta. Not everyone sleeps during siesta time, but they would work in the mornings and then be off for lunch to spend time with family, and I thought that was really important. And they weren't as polite as Americans, but I liked that. Americans will say sorry for almost anything, but Spaniards are much more over and nice. Also, but if we were lost in the city, they would like be like, where are you trying to go? And help us. Sometimes they would literally walk us to where we were trying to go. So they were, they were really nice. I think some of the big things that I've kind of taken back from it is just kind of uh, taking my time whenever it comes to things. They're very social there. And here we're really just go, go, go. And we rush through, through things, whether it's a meal or a conversation, we're always just trying to get to the end of it and leave. Yeah. But in Spain, a lot of the times, you know, it's more about just like sitting down, socializing. And then also going off of what Ashlyn was saying, ask, being able to just ask people for help and knowing that they're going to help you, or maybe they're not going to help you, but <laughs> most of the time they're pretty friendly about it. And here we kind of just um, were scared, it seems like, to really just reach out and ask people for certain things. Mm -hmm. yeah. true. So do you guys feel like you experienced a lot of culture shock while you were in Spain? Yeah, definitely the first few days were, they were rough, getting oriented to the city and finding out what our routine would be, but it was good, good cultural, good culture shock. What do you feel like was the biggest difference between the United States and Spain? Kind of like what Alex said, the time orientation, Americans are very on time all the time, and if you're not on time, then someone's gonna be mad at you. But in Spain, if you say, oh, we'll meet around 11, it might be 11.15 or... Or 11.30. So, yeah, or <laughs> later. <laughs> not even meet up. Yeah. <laughs> And it was really hard was not having phones because a lot of us didn't have service or internet. And so we would say, okay, we're going to meet here at this time. And then one of us would catch the bus late or something. And that would, that was really hard to get together in a group. Whereas here we will just like can text outside, I'm here. I think one of the biggest things for me that was kind of a shock, and it was probably because we were in such a big city, but the fact that I could go down from my host mom's apartment and I could be at a restaurant at the bottom floor and this right next door is another restaurant and then a store and then maybe half a block away there's another like 10 shopping places. Uh, it was just kind of different. And then also having all that, you have all that modern stuff that you want to see as far as like restaurants and stores, but maybe half a mile away I could go see a cathedral or something um, historic. 
So is there anything that you want to tell students who would like to study abroad with Missouri Southern? It's really awesome. Dr. Galvey did a really good job being our <laughs> professor. I mean, he was definitely fun, but also we did work. Um, the Spain trip is really special because you get to be there for a whole month rather than just you know 10 day trip. You get to really experience the culture of Spain. You can't take it on in a week, really. I would just say it's really rewarding. I mean, going into it, it's a little bit scary, I would say. You're, you don't know what to expect, and that's where the culture shock comes into play. But um, throughout the trip, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about the uh, country you're staying in, and you learn a lot about the country that you're from. So definitely worthwhile. Is there anything else that you guys would like to share about your trip? Um, I'd like to add, just real quick, uh, the experience was great uh, because of these guys. Um, I was honestly a, a little surprised uh, because I taught abroad in the past uh, through a different university. Um, I'd never taken uh, Missouri Southern students and I just couldn't believe how well they handled themselves. Um, just, they were just very mature in the way they carried themselves. Um, they were just happy to do anything. They were very positive about everything. Uh, they had a lot of fun, yet they didn't get in trouble. They were smart, you know. Um, a lot of different personalities, but they all interacted so well with each other, you know. Um, I don't know. I, to me, it was really, really uh, rewarding. Um, it reminded me that, you know, like uh, every generation, uh, we tend to complain, right, about the newer generations. Uh, uh, millennials, all the, you know, they're entitled or whatever, right? <laughs> Not really. You know, every generation is an uh, evolution. And the way they handle themselves uh, is so much better than the way I would have handled myself at their age if I was in, the same, uh, in that same program. So uh, kudos to these guys, really. Well, I want to thank you guys for being on the show. I think that you guys had a really awesome trip, and it sounds like it was a great opportunity. It was. Thanks for having Definitely. us. Thank yeah. you. Thank Absolutely. You. I'm your host, Mackenzie Payton, and I hope that you join us next time here on KGCS for another episode of Window on the World.